Wonderful. So lovely to have you all here for our second Barichara update meeting. Um, we have this time scheduled for 90 minutes, but we're still gonna we're just gonna feel it out for a week or two or three and see how how long we actually want to go. I think the presentation that I have is maybe a half an hour, something like that, because I want to show pictures and tell stories of what's happening here um, and continue painting that more comprehensive picture that we started seeing last week. Um, but it, the amount, amount of time I think is going to really depend on how much conversation we have and how much sharing we have from the people who are in Barichara. And so just going to feel into that as we go. But what I love seeing here is a mix of people who are in Barichara, people who are working with the Earth Regenerators Fund and its governance, people who are working with our bridge between Earth Regenerators and the crypto Web3 regenerative finance world. Um, and just sort of like this, this holding of space, I can feel the weaving is starting to occur, even with the, the relatively small numbers of us who are here at the moment. We're actually already starting to represent some of what I'm going to be talking about today, um, which is I'm going to go back and forth between what is happening locally and on the ground in a really concrete way and what is happening in the larger realm of weaving fabrics across communities and forming of alliances. And it's what's lovely is that there are people on this call who represent different pieces of that bigger picture I'll be talking about. So there's actually a space for some of you to step in. So for example, I'll talk a little bit about the Regen Foundation. And if Lilian, if you'd like to, if that comes up, you could share some of your perspective on it. So it, what's interesting here is you'll see this blending of what's happening in Barichara and what's happening in the larger, really the larger regenerative movement, because there's such a fractal, such a, a web of whole part relationships for what's happening here. Um, so what I'd love to do is just begin by jumping right into the presentation, because I think the presentation will give us a rich visual context and a social field in which to have a dialogue. And then we'll take as long as we want after that to have conversations and answer questions, clarify things, invite different perspectives about what's happening, and really practice weaving this um, multifaceted bridge between the local community and what's happening in Barichara and what's happening in many different communities around the world. And so with that said, I'd love to begin sharing my screen here and we'll get started. And so today um, I have more pictures and I made a point to try and have every photo that I take um, be photos that were taken after last Thursday's Barichara update. So this is actually a picture that was taken on, was it Sunday, Monday? I, I think it was Sunday, it was a few days ago. Um, but there's Jacob, he's waving at us, he's also on this call. And here are Alpha and Charles. And I'll talk more about what's happening in this picture in a moment, but I just wanna start by giving you a sense of what's happening among the people who are here. And one thing that's happening is they're all becoming good friends with each other. And another thing that's happening is they've all entered into a very complex field of relationships where many things are happening. And that includes some schisms that have happened around me and my relationship to them. And how do we hold all the complexity of what's happening? And so I will welcome any sharing of that from people who are here in the Barichara group. But I really wanna stress how much Earth Regenerators who come here are becoming friends with each other. Just how deeply Jacob is not faking that smile. <laughs> like, just wanted to name that because a big part of what we're doing is creating centropic relationships or relationships that grow together in space, time, and function, both ecologically in the more than human world and socially and culturally within the human world. And so these friendships are like the ground from which fertile growth can occur. And so it's just so beautiful to see these friendships forming. And I think it's one of the most important parts of the work of what we're doing here. So today I want to focus on the weaving of two kinds of patterns. The happenings within the territory here in the Bari, Bari Chara bioregion in the Northern Andes, Andes of Colombia, and also how this territory is relating to the world at large. Because the idea of the Bari Chara ecoversity is to create an internally focused territorial pattern of development for regenerative economics and regenerative education. 
but it's also a prototype for the rest of the world, and it's connected to the Earth Regenerators platform, to the Regen Network, and to other communities out there in the world. And I wanna just start teasing out some, a little bit more clarity about how those relationships look as patterns. So that's really the way that I structured this presentation today, is to go back and forth between these two levels. The first thing I wanna share is that after Charles Upton arrived, uh, in Barichara, a little over a month, or almost a month ago, I think it's a month tomorrow that he arrived. One of the things that we've aspired for him to share is his knowledge about how to do watershed restoration. And so last Friday, we were able to hold this session. And for those of you who see Friday 10 6, 2022, that's not October 6th, that's actually June 10th. In Colombia, they reverse, they reverse the month and the day. But what happened was last Friday, Charles held a public talk about how to guide the power of water towards our goals in landscape restoration. And so we did this in Margarita Higuera's home. Margarita is a woman who received funding from some crowdfunding that I led back in January for the Barichara Regeneration Fund to turn her house into a learning center. And now a lot of community activities like this talk are happening because of that external support and so that's what's interesting is crowdfunding to the global community enabled the space that Charles entered into. And Charles entered into the space in part because Cello, a personal finance company, uh, approached me about giving me a fellowship for the work that we're doing. And I immediately passed all the money from the fellowship on to supporting Charles and Chad to come here, as well as work on the ground in the Ori Hindalagua project. I'm naming this because I wanna say that something as local as Charles giving a talk is already in the meshwork of what's happening in the territory and its relationship to the larger world, but in ways that are largely invisible to us. And so this context happened because of this weaving inside and outside that's continually happening. So these are some of the participants. Look at all those smiling faces. You'll see some of our Earth Regeneration friends like Chad and Jacob there in the crowd. But then you'll see a lot of local people who I know, like this woman with the red hair in the front, right in the center, that's Vicky. She's one of the two women who founded the Bio Parque that I talk about so much. And off to her right and our left in the blue shirt is Manuela, who is a neighbor who's got land next to the Las Albercas land where we're placing the Ecoversity. And she was a key catalyst in bringing in the Centropic Agroforestry work. And there are a lot more people here in this group but what I want to show is that when Charles was presenting to the community, he was actually presenting to a blending of people locally and people from the outside. And that that patterning of the two is present everywhere. It's actually not absent from anywhere, but it's largely invisible. And so, Charles, first of all, for those of you who have seen him with his beautiful beard that we're all sort of sad went away, he decided to shave last week. And this very handsome, clean-shaven, and slightly too well-kept guy here is actually Charles Upton. Um, and he gave a beautiful talk to maybe 25 or 30 people that were in attendance. And the kinds of things he talked about. He gave an overview of water cycles, the big water cycle of how precipitation forms from rainwater coming from the ocean into mountains and land, and, and then weaving that down into the small water cycle, which is the dynamic um, sharing of water uh, and evapotranspiration between plants and land surfaces and clouds, and just looking at how all of these cycles of water create a continual abundance of water, but the water often isn't where we want it or it's often not managed in ways that are useful. So he gave an introduction to rainwater harvests. How do you take these local water cycles and turn them into water cycles that regenerate landscapes and create security for communities. He did this by talking a lot about the principles and the key concepts of watershed restoration, water retention, and rainwater harvesting. So he talked at length about this, but he did it by giving lots of practical examples. Examples of work that he's done himself in California, in Syria, and other places all over the planet, and also examples that have inspired him. And so this, this talk was mostly a collection of photos of projects that he talked about what was happening in the projects, 
how people were thinking about them, what the compromises and tensions were, what the basic hydrological principles were that were involved. And this created a really stimulating discussion for the participants. And he did this, of course, by drawing from lots of stories from his own experience, having done this for more than a decade all over the world. So Charles is sort of like, um, I don't know what you'd say. He's like a, a national treasure or a regenerative community treasure of knowledge and experience that we were able to have here in the community sharing its knowledge. In the meantime, Chad, who's here on the call, was doing some other things in the community in the last week. And Chad, you can chime in with more if you'd like when I'm done with the presentation. Just wanted to give a little like high level picture of some of the things that I saw Chad doing this week, including practicing how to use a machete. <laughs> As you can see in this picture of the Beetle Park. And a lot of what Chad's doing is he's really looking at the creation of community models for economic exchange, working with Margarita and a network of women who share surplus food that would go to waste to create value added products in the local economy and drawing on his extensive knowledge of the commons, cryptocurrency, um, community currencies and other related fields to just feel into this space, ask questions and start learning about how we can create community models and study them so that they can be continually improved. He also has been looking at a lot of the healing practices within the Bardi Char community, including the healing power of pruning Akinshu magnum trees with a machete, like he's doing in this photo. <laughs> but really just something about how powerfully we can slow down, lean in and connect into ourselves as we're just in this healing and nurturing space. And of course, he's been learning pruning techniques, watershed restoration, and other ecosystem restoration work by working with Charles, by going to Oriental Agua, and by coming to the Bio Parque to work with me. And so um, this blending of learning from the territory and bringing knowledge to the territory, all of it embedded within larger frameworks of restoration and healing. Chad's just like the living embodiment of that, where they all come together. And I've seen him throughout the last week deepening and clarifying on all of these fronts. And then we have our lovely friend, Hannah, Hannah Apricot Egbert, who's a dear friend of mine. And she arrived last week. And in big ways, she's just looking at the potential for engagement with all that's happening in Barichara, with the Regenerative Water Alliance that she partnered with Alpha to create about a year ago. And they're hosting right now. A, uh, a call about finance models for watershed restoration that I joined and spoke to and gave a case study about 20 minutes before starting this session. And she's also looking at how this might relate to the Abundant Earth Foundation, which she founded several years ago, which is basically a community support infrastructure for permaculture practitioners and ecosystem restoration projects all over the world. So Hannah is sort of like a traveling postcard of welcome to uh, to connect from one geography to another in the permaculture movement. And you can just see in her smile and her comfort when she lands in any new place that this is something she's done for a long time. And we're really lucky to have her here on Bari Char right now. Alpha, of course, is looking at the hydrological cycle here in Bari Chara as a case study for how we could design for intentional climate change and how to restore our small water cycles to restore entire watersheds and how to restore regional climate systems because that's a major focus of the work in Barichara. So he's studying that in general and reading lots of research and talking to experts around the world while also just continually asking questions and looking at the patterns he sees embedded within this territory. And he's also looking at regenerative finance models for watershed restoration through the Regenerative Water Alliance, which is really a major focus for him. So he's spending a lot of his time on calls and then jumping off the calls to go grab a pickaxe and dig a, dig a contour swale. Because one thing that I've heard him say several times in the last week is that being a theoretical physicist who studies complexity and nonlinear dynamics, he's really ready to go from theoretical studies of the hydrological cycle to hands-on practice and getting his fingers in the dirt, which he's been doing in force in the last week. But in parallel with this, in addition to what the Earth Regenerators are doing, yes, this slide is in Spanish, um, there are a lot of things happening in the local Barichara community among the Colombian residents and the community leaders in the territory. And one of them is that we are in the process of creating a territorial foundation. 
And earlier this week, we had a workshop and a teach-in about territorial foundations from a new organization called Territoria, which is an organization that formed around a network of seven bioregions in Colombia, each of which is creating a territorial foundation. One of those seven is Barichara. And so we have been in a, a community design process for about a year, learning about territorial foundations, exploring how we might prototype and implement them here in our territory, how to partner with the other territories spread across Colombia and across the rest of Latin America. But some members of the local community haven't really been exposed to what a territorial foundation is. And so to just translate some of these Spanish words, like here in point number two, co-creando infraestructura philanthropica, is how do we co-create philanthropy, a philanthropic infrastructure so that we can create, consolidate, and grow these territorial foundations. Or what number three says, if I translate, is how to articulate the distinctive forces of local actors and how to create shared vision <coughs> for sustainable development and autonomy of the territory. So what we're doing here is we're creating a shared language and a shared understanding among the community leaders in Barichara. And what I mean by community leaders is people working on regenerative projects, people working within the community on how to transform the food system, people working on cultural trauma and decolonization within the territory. And they are collectively learning about how to organize ourselves at the territorial scale while we build the infrastructure. So we're building it and learning about it at the same time. And this is an interesting blending of what's happening in the territory and what's happening in the larger world, because the larger world is that there's a 100-year history of community foundations, a 30-year history of territorial foundations, most of them in Mexico and Romania, and most of them not particularly regenerative, as Paula, who's here on the call and from Romania, can tell you. Uh, she and I had a lovely conversation about this. But when we blend the model of territorial foundation with regenerative economics and ecosystem restoration, which is what we're doing here in Barichara, something really interesting pops up, which is the idea of a bioregional learning center blended with community philanthropy, blended with territorial economic and community development. So just showing you there's so many levels to this. And this is part of the work that's happening within the Barichara community in Spanish. And the other earth regenerators were not invited to this. And that was intentional because we want local governance and local sovereignty by the leaders within the community. It's local people in Barichara who are gonna manage the territorial foundation. And they're gonna set the terms of how earth regenerators are invited to help the community as a way of protecting ourselves against accidental colonization. And so I just wanted to tell you that this is also happening and that this is a huge part of the work. This is an extremely important bit of groundwork that's being developed. Just as a reminder for those who weren't on our call last week, territorial foundations have lots of elements to them. I'm not gonna fully explain what they are now, but I just wanna tell you that we are envisioning the territorial foundation as the gatekeeper that protects the local community from extraction and colonialism from the outside. So there's a boundary with the outside world and resources from the outside, especially money, are not gonna be allowed in except through the territorial foundation, which is managed by a wisdom council of local people. People who know the community, its territorial history, its cultural and its ecological needs. And then the money is dispersed to different thematic groups, such as water, um, women's empowerment, education for youth, whatever the community decides that they need to focus on. That will be thematic groups that actually manage the implementation of all the projects. And that the territorial boy. foundation. You pretty. Oh, uh, and whoever is I fun, love you. speaking now, if you could mute yourself, that would be really helpful. Um, thank you. Um, but just to say that this model of the territorial foundation is, has a lot of parts to it, but I just wanted to show you conceptually how we can develop on multiple fronts an integrated and holistic approach to territorial development by very mindfully creating this wisdom council, which was strengthened by that teach-in on territorial foundations, and also how we can start to make visible these inside patterns and outside patterns and how they're already weaving with each other. So as the territorial foundation takes form, it can evolve within existing relationships. It's gonna arise within very fertile ground because so much is already happening. Now also, um, several people in Earth Regenerators who are here in Barichara 
have been going to the land Ori Himalagua, which was land that we bought with crowdfunding money from the Bari Chara Regeneration Fund. And this is Oswaldo here in the picture, a local biologist who has a lot of experience with reforestation work and who knows a lot about especially the relationship between plants and birds. And here he is on Orihandalagua, offering some um, teaching and guidance and mentorship to the earth regenerators who are here about a work project they're about to do on the land. And what I wanna show is just that this relationship between local, cultural, and ecological knowledge and earth regenerators who are grabbing pickaxes and shovels is being sustained even when there are language boundaries. Oswaldo doesn't speak English and half the earth regenerators here don't speak Spanish, but we have people who are helping to translate and we're doing work party parties on Oriandalagua. So in the last week, a, a rhythm or a schedule has started to be set up where at least once a week, they'll go to the land and do for focused work parties on Oriandalagua. Again, this is land funded from the outside, managed with sovereignty by locals, and supported with work on the ground from people who visit from the outside and people who live here. Just naming again and again that the local and the more than local are touching each other at every point along the way. And they're observing things like this line of rocks that we set up about a year ago that have held the sediments in place. Charles was looking at this and explaining how water retention is being done effectively with these interventions we'd already been doing, which are helping the sediments to form and slow down the water and the soils. And then the seeds of the native grass are able to take root and grow during the rainy season. And we turn that hard clay material on the right into naturally evolving garden beds on the left, simply by strategically placing piles of rocks. And so we continually do this kind of work at Orihandalagua. More of it's being done now, including assessing what's happened before and how to improve upon the work. Here are Chad and Jacob. I believe you guys are digging a contour swale, if I understand correctly. And that's Alpha off in the distance on the left. You can see him there in the background, working at Orihandalagua. So this is one of the work parties that happened in the last week. So just you can see that this work is continually happening on the ground in the background while these larger webs of alliances are forming. Also, Charles is really hungry to start some new stream restoration projects, including this one. So this is the picture that's next to the one I showed at the beginning, you know, the picture of Jacob smiling and waving at everyone. What they're doing here is they're looking at a place where a stream bed that crosses the land of Guaymaro, which is the land of our neighbors, Jupe and Julia, a Dutch couple that have been doing reforestation work for 10 years. They own the land next to Las Albercas, which is the land where the ecoversity is gonna be housed. And this is the stream bed upstream. What they're talking about here is where Jacob is standing on the trail. It's a piece of land that's shaped roughly like a, a, an outstretched U, which is the perfect form for putting what's called an, a Roman arch, which is a, time of pa a type of passive passive filter stone structure, where you place a stone structure in the stream bed, and when the water hits it, it slows down the water, but then the water can filter through the rocks. And what they're doing here is they're talking about how to scope out a project that's going to begin in the next few days that is going to basically dig out that bit of trail that Jacob is standing on and build a raised stone bridge that walks over the stream flow when it's raining and begins a riparian or a stream restoration. And so this is a project that's about to begin. And what's interesting is, while this is work for the Ecoversity, it's not on the Ecoversity's land. It's on the land of its neighbor, which means we're integrating the land between neighbors as though private land ownership boundaries don't exist because this stream doesn't care where the fence is. And behind Charles to the right, about another 150 feet down is the boundary with the lands of Las Albercas, where private land ownership says it's two different people's land. But if we restore part of this stream, it actually brings healthier water to the land below. And as Charles started doing this, he talked to Manuela, who owns the land upstream. And when they do this project, they're gonna bring the campesinos who work on her land to participate in it, so they can be trained in how to do it and then replicate it on her land which means on these three pieces of land, this one, the one above, and the one below, we're gonna start replicating this pattern of how to restore the watershed together from the very first moment that the very first rock is lifted. 
And so this is something that's being planned right now and it's gonna begin in the next few days. So probably by next week, we'll have photos of this to share. So check back next Thursday and stay tuned. It's so dynamic, there's so much going on. Oh, and Stephen Morris arrived. Hey, Stephen, you can't see him because I'm in screen share mode, but he's sitting here next to me. You'll see him in a moment. moment. Stephen, who lives in Boulder, Colorado, arrived here a couple of days ago. Oh my God, this is day three for you. Um, um, he'll be able to share, if he likes, a little bit of what's, what his experience is like. And here he is when I took him to walk Las Albrecas yesterday to start to see this land and feel into the territory. And what I want to say is, so Stephen's already ex exploring how we've, we've made some field site visits to both the Bio Parque and Las Albercas. Bio Parque the day before yesterday, Las Albercas yesterday. We worked in the Bio Parque in the afternoon, although I think he mostly babysat at least. <laughs> but you know, that's part of it. <laughs> um, we'll see what happens for day three, because that's today. And really what I see Stephen doing so far is just feeling into the hands-on nature of the work after participating in Earth Regenerators online throughout the early part of this year. So he can share a lot more, I'll let him share whatever he likes, but just to say that a new arrival has entered the scene and is starting to integrate into the flow. And it's kind of incredible, isn't it? What happens in a couple of days? Oh my God, yes, <laughs> that's all I can say. So more, more to be said perhaps when the slideshow is done, but we're so glad that Stephen is here. And yeah, that hands-on work is real. Yesterday, I taught him the techniques for how to pull grass. And before Elise demanded a babysitting friend, or I'm sorry, someone, her prince, her prince <laughs> who could help defend the princesses against monsters. I don't know. She was defending me against monsters. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Progressive so, princess. Yeah, the, the poor, helpless prince needs the very powerful five year old princess to <laughs> protect him against monsters and to protect him against pulling grass, apparently. Um, so, Yes, the joy of being here in Bodhichara. Um, and that's Penny standing next to him. I'm pretty sure someone, probably me, just said something silly and inappropriate. And that's why they're laughing in this photo. <laughs> um, but also, this is another photo from yesterday. That's Penny on the right. Uh, that's uh, Stephen in the middle and that's Charles on the left. And what they're doing is pulling the grass to extend a frontier boundary, which you can see actually better in this picture. Now what they're doing is, this invasive grass grows to be about six feet tall, lays over on its side to extend over and conquer and destroy native ecosystems, which means if we left the grass next to the biodiverse collection of uh, bushes there on the left, they would eventually take it back over, which means we need to continually push the grass away. And right now the grass is really tall, full of seeds and about to disperse them to the wind which means if we don't push this boundary further away, it will start to invade and take over the increasingly established native ecosystem on the left. And so we're protecting that native ecosystem by pulling grass and pushing the boundary away. And so this is one of those things where simply the act of pulling grass has a very complex context of relationships. And there in that white long sleeve shirt in the middle is Chad, although you can't see his face here. So he had joined us by this time and all of these lovely people were doing this work in the Bio Parque yesterday. Okay, so I just wanted to give a quick update on the pledge community and the pledge fund that we talked about last week, which is to say that we now have $11,000 pledged from the pledge community at $1,000 increments. And we're in the beginning of forming the community to see how external supports can be brought to the Ecoversity and how the Ecoversity can connect itself to the global world. And I think today's presentation that I've been giving starts to make more visible how we're already setting the stage for this. So afterwards, I'll share this recording for the, with the members of the pledge community so they can show other people. Being in this pledge community is helping us learn how to navigate this woven and needing to be separate relationship between local and global for the territory and the larger world. And so as we're weaving among those in regenerative finance, crypto and the web three world, the commons and a lot more, navigating these relationships between within the territory patterns and the territory's relationship to the world at large is just gonna become more delicate and important. And what this means is we're about to begin a pro-social process for how the work in the territory can strengthen related efforts in other bioregions by having a focused community initially prototyping within the pledge community of 
what does it mean to be someone who brings money from the outside, but you don't get to say how the money is used because the members of the Territorial Foundation are gonna decide how the money is used and they're the gatekeepers to the outside world. But because there's so much value being exchanged between the local community and the larger world, there are many other ways to form healthy decolonizing relationships. And we're gonna focus on how to do that within this pledge community. And so if you'd like to become part of the pledge community, talk to me. For those of you here on this call who are in the pledge community, pretty soon we'll actually set ourselves up in a community dialogue for us to start to collaborate in this way. And I hope that the presentation today really help, help start to reveal why it's gonna be so important to have focused conversations around the design of a bar HR token and how do we do it in a decolonizing way and in what ways should we be exclusive because it protects the local community and in what ways should we not be exclusive because it'd be a problem all these things we talked about some last week we will not stop talking about I think we'll just talk about them more and more I just wanted to give you a brief update that there is progress on this front and it's moving forward also oh my goodness by the way, all this is in the last week, just in case you were wondering. Pro Social World, there's a, a deep collaborator. I've been working with them since before Pro Social World existed, and they started as a project within the Evolution Institute. They received funding from the Templeton World Charity Found Foundation last year to create a network of projects to bring Pro Social to Latin America. Who do they know in Latin America? Little old me. And so, Pro-social is deeply interwoven into the Earth Regenerators community, as many of you know. A lot of people in our community are trained and certified pro-social facilitators. We bring pro-social processes to every group that we work with. We have a very deep history from the very beginning of Earth Regenerators with pro-social. And pro-social world as an organization received a $2 million grant from the John Templeton World Foundation to bring pro-social into the Latin American context. And they hired two wonderful people, Marcelo and Michelle from Brazil. They have built an infrastructure. They're about six months into the project. They've already created a continental network, really more than continental because it's Central and South America, with 11 partner organizations. By the way, Earth Regenerators is one of them because of what we're doing here in Barichara. And we're working with groups all across Latin America to bring pro-social. Now, what's interesting about this is that Five of these 11 partner organizations are in Colombia, just by happenstance. And we have the network of territorial foundations. So I started talking with the team at ProSocial World because they're old friends of mine about how we could create a ProSocial training center in Colombia in the Spanish language to spread across this network of 11 partners and the network of territorial foundations through the work we're doing in Earth Regenerators. So what I wanna stress here is this is not the Barichara Ecoversa. This is not Earth Regenerators. This is pro-social world. But pro-social world is creating a network of networks. And because of the anchoring relationship of Earth Regenerators and its community, and me as an individual person, and what we're doing in Barichara, and just the fact that 11 organizations came together and five of them are in Colombia, we already have an anchor focus for a Colombia training center in pro-social. In, in Spanish. As a side note, because Centropic Agroforestry comes from Brazil, and one of our teachers in Barichara creating the Centropic Agroforestry System as part of the Barichara Ecoversity is connected with the Gauche Institute. We're actually talking about creating a pro-social training center in Portuguese, um, basically deployed through large-scale Centropic Agroforestry projects, but it's early days and we haven't had those conversations yet. Just wanted to tell you that I've been planting the seeds for this weaving throughout this week by working with ProSocial World as this ongoing and unfolding process happens for their Latin America project that we're a part of. And there's the Regen Foundation. This is something that started back in December of last year when the Regen Foundation was establishing itself. And they began creating a network of eight regenerative communities, which they call community endowment projects. So they have Regen Foundation as part of the Regen Network, for those of you who know, and they have decided to give community endowments to eight regenerative efforts. They're gonna be distributing governance across them by creating a decentralized autonomous organization. Basically the Regen Foundation itself 
will be one of these DAOs. And they're doing this by giving regen tokens to these eight community efforts. 500,000 regen tokens to each of them while cultivating a framework of shared governance across them. And oh, Earth Regenerators is one of them. So of these eight projects, ER is one of them, which means we're learning how this community endowment of 500,000 regen tokens relates to the ER fund, not to the Barichara fund, but to the ER fund. But because so much of what Earth Regenerators is doing is becoming woven with what's happening in Barichara to prototype bioregional development, to connect to the bioregional catalyst, to the regenerative project incubator, to Earth Regenerators fellows, to a variety of things that the ER fund is gonna be developing, we are beginning to explore how to spread learnings from Barichara into this network of the seven other regenerative projects and Earth Regenerators. It's very early days for this. So just letting you know that part of what's happening this week is Lillian, who's on this call. Lillian and I are getting clear about what's happening with these community endowments. We have a call tomorrow with Austin from the Regen Foundation to clarify further what it really means to be one of these community projects. But all the while, we're holding the awareness that what we're doing in Barichara can spread its learnings across the seven other regenerative projects of the Regen Foundation, just like it can spread across the 10 other projects of Pro Social World. You see, on and on. This is just holding awareness for how we're gonna figure out how to do this. Because oh, there's also Territoria, these seven territorial foundations. And I already mentioned that a teach-in happened where Territoria taught community leaders in Barichara about territorial foundations. Right now, there are seven territories in Colombia in this map. Each of them has their own local team. Barichara is only one of them. So these are seven distinct bioregions with very different ecosystems and very different cultural histories. And Territoria is the national support organization that has been created to support them. And I've already trained Territoria and ProSocial so that they can bring ProSocial to the rest of the world. So if we create a Columbia training system for ProSocial, it will be Territoria who does it. We'll train them to train these seven bioregions, including Barichara. But they'll learn a lot about ProSocial by learning by what we're doing in Earth Regenerators and how we're doing it in Barichara in the Spanish language context and in the Colombian context that makes sense to these seven bioregions. So we're cultivating regenerative leadership across them. So what I want you to see is region foundation and region network, earth regenerators, a network of territorial foundations, pro-social, and centropic agroforestry that I'm not talking about very much today, and the crypto and web three space. Am I overwhelming you yet? Maybe I am. All of this, all of it has moved forward in the last seven days, all of it because so many people are involved and because each is leading their own network of networks while we pull grass and stack rocks and dig contour swales here on the ground. And play with little girls. And play with little princesses who are protecting princes from monsters. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. And I forgot to mention this one. Here on the left is my friend, Stefan Tuchin. That's his, his colleague, Jana. They came here from Cologne, Germany on Sunday. That's Elise entertaining them on the right. The reason I mention them is Stefan is someone I met back in 2012, back when I was doing strategic framing work, back when I was taking George Lakoff's findings and helping spread them around the world. And there was a special event that happened in Cologne, Germany called Smart CSOs, Smart Civil Society Organizations, which at the time, more than 10 years ago, was a network of 300 European civil society organizations that were taking findings from my frame analysis and two really powerful re reports, one of them from the World Wildlife Fund and the other one from Oxfam International. And they were taking them to figure out how to transform the civil society sector of Europe. What I didn't know is that Stefan worked for a Catholic social services organization in Latin America, bringing aid and charitable giving from Germany to community development, human rights, peace building, ecological restoration, and so Stefan has been following my work since 2012. And he's just been wondering, since I started talking about it, what is Joe doing in Colombia? 
Is it just a gringo from the north with his own gringo permaculture project? How deep does this go into the community? So Stefan, who has joined Earth Regenerators but quietly lurks there, sent me a message and said, I'm gonna be in Barichara, can we meet? And I was like, Stefan Tushin, where do I know him from? I know we met in person somewhere. Maybe with sustainable brands, I don't know. It turned out it was this work from a former life of mine. But I mentioned this because he and Jana were in Barichara talking with a, a number of local community organizations, including some that we work with, like Fundacion Mujer y Vida, about how to bring money from Catholic social services that are not connected to missionary work in any way. So they're very careful to decolonize the money. And they've been working in Latin America for decades. And Stefan's been working in this role for at least a decade himself. How they could bring this community development money in a better organized way into territories. And guess what? The perfect vehicle for that is territorial foundations. So Stefan came, we had lunch together, at least entertained him and Jana quite a lot. And we talked about territorial foundations and the work we're doing with the Barichara Fund. And then I introduced Stefan to the team at Territoria because he was going back to Bogota. And sometime this week, he's going to meet with them to talk about how their aid organization could bring money to the seven territorial foundations as they're forming as a way of decolonizing money from charitable giving in Europe to go directly into community empowerment through to ter territorial foundations. We're just setting the stage for bigger things. And this happened on Sunday. So again, everything I'm talking about has happened in the last week. And of course, we're starting to prepare a series of workshops in Centropic Agroforestry, but I won't go into that. And we're getting ready for our first community ceremony in the Bio Parque, but I won't go into that because I think I've said too much. Well, I just they haven't happened yet. But they're in process. I We've know. been doing the preparatory work. There's not much to say until they happen. <laughs> I just wanted to show you two things to really ground this. On the left, that is a tree called castagneto. That castagneto grew from a seed that was dropped in our food forest in the Bioparque. When a bird nibbled on part of the seed in another part of the Bioparque, flew to a tree in our food forest and dropped it on the ground. And because we had made the soil, the soil porous and open instead of compact and hard, that seed took root in one of our retention pods. And yesterday, I dug it up because I wanted to put it somewhere else and I just wanted to see its roots. This baby castagneto, a native tree, look at it between my fingers as I picked it up and carried it to another place where we had mulch and soil and protection for it from other bushes and I lovingly placed it in the ground. And I just wanted to, sh to show you what happens when you prepare the soil and then you walk away. The birds and the water and the soil and the castagneto tree did all of this work while I was off doing something else. Here on the right, this is a lovely native uh, bush. I do not know its name. I just want you to notice that it makes these beautiful red flowers. And then later, as you can see in the background, it creates seeds that fly like dandelions. These dandelion seeds arrived in our food forest after we prepared soil. When the rains came, they grew. And right now the seeds are spreading to the wind and all of the prepared soil, where yesterday, Stephen, Penny, Chad, and Charles pulled grass so that we can spread this native plant instead of the invasive grass. I just wanted to name for you how important it is to prepare the soil, how important it is to open the space for these possibilities. And then all of the complexity arrives through the ecosystems themselves, which is why it's possible for me to tell the story of what's happened in the last week. This is not Joe the superhuman. No single human being could possibly do what I'm talking about. I am naming an ecosystem of interdependent webs, of interdependent relationships, all playing out because over the span of years, the cultural soil has been prepared. And that's what you can see in these two pictures. So, any questions? Let's talk. What do you see here? And anyone who's here in the community, what might you like to share from what you've been seeing? 
from your time here. The floor is open. Mm. Sit with it for a moment. <laughs> Hi, Rachel. Lovely to see you. <laughs> Happy, please. Hi. <clears throat> Yeah, I just wanted to share um, that yesterday, while um, a bunch of other people were working in the Bio Parque, um, I was with Margarita, wonderful friend Margarita. Um, we finally got with Paul, who um, has a farm in Guane and wants to get a biogas digester. We finally went to visit Somara. Um, who has a biogas digester that's been working for the past two years. And for people who might not have heard of this technology, what it is, is it's, um, uh, it's kind of like an extra cow stomach that is made out of greenhouse plastic and sits in a trench and into which you put cow manure, pig manure, can put other things as well, um, goat manure, and um, so this one has been working with the manure from pigs and goats, basically, um, and producing methane, which is then piped into the kitchen and used for cooking. And at the other end, it produces a liquid fertilizer that is excellent. And um, it's preventing the off-gassing of methane from animal waste, such as that, which is created by the pigs and, and the, um, the goats. Uh, and then that has been used to help grow some wonderful crops. Um, this woman, Samara, and her husband have um, everything from banana trees, plantain trees. Um, they've got coffee, uh, shade grown coffee, uh, pine a field of pineapple and yucca, um, and I could go on and on. So this was just a wonderful thing to observe and um, at the same time as we were doing that, uh, Margarita's um, right-hand handyman uh, was busy converting an old refrigerator into a, um, a dehydrator, which will be used, uh, or you know, the plan is to use it to, to create um, dehydrated pineapple, which for anybody who's familiar with farms, you know, sometimes you get a lot of ripe fruit and uh, you don't want to lower the price of it and you don't want to saturate the market. So if you can uh, preserve that, that's value added. And uh, it also um, gives you that benefit of um, the shelf life being extended. So um, we're, we're beginning to make some plans that there will be a biogas digester workshop, um, community build out Mindo on the land of Paul. And uh, as a side benefit, uh, Rafa's mother might be able to um, have some of that biogas because they are neighbors. Mm, thank you for that, Kathy. And for those who don't know, Kathy actually went back to her friends and neighbors in the US and did a little crowdfunding of her own to help support the, the building of a new bio, biogas digester. And they're talking about how best to use that money now and which, which place to put it within the community. So Kathy is role modeling community philanthropy while also doing some nice reporting. So thank you for that, Kathy. Is there anyone else who would like to share, including anyone else here um, that would like to share? Rachel, please. Oh, I'm sorry, I was waving goodbye. I have, I was waving goodbye, I have to go. I'm sorry, this, uh, just I only had a little brief window to be with you, but it was lovely to see you all. And uh, I'm trying to set aside more time for our next meeting, so I won't be in such a hurry. So anyway, um, just encouraging you all to keep up the good work. It's very exciting. So very happy to be part of this group. Thank you, Rachel. And Elise misses, Elise really misses your hairstyling skills. Uh, me too. <laughs> we love okay. you. Love you too. Take care. Um, anyone else who has questions, comments, stories to share? Uh, I'll, I'll jump in if you don't mind. Yeah, and thank ahead. you for that presentation. It does feel like a big bang 
of colliding inevitable forces. So um, yeah, I guess I, I'm interested in this conversation and this um, this effort because I, you know, I've been part of the Earth Regenerators online community since 2020, and um, it was interesting because even back then, um, okay, so I, I guess refi is this new term that still doesn't have consensus on what it means. There's um, more questions and answers right now, but it is combining elements of of both the the crypto web three movement with the permaculture region ag movement, um, but also being co-opted by the carbon credit mafia. <laughs> no, I mean, carbon credits is fun um, for now because it's bringing people in um, and it's bringing a lot of excitement into the industry, but at the same time, it is not, um, it is not what's going to bring us to, to further beyond these colonial systems. So anyways, with that being said, Ethereum is the uh, most kind of well-known blockchain um, second generation after Bitcoin. Uh, it, it got started around 2013 to 2015. And every year since 2015, they've been having developer conferences and it, and it goes around the world. But it's basically bringing um, the top people in the industry to a singular place for an extended amount of time. And in 2020, they announced that the uh, developer conference would be in Bogota, but COVID canceled that. And then 2021 got canceled as well. So two years later, no, de no developer conference. Finally, it's coming this year, um, October 11th to the 14th in Bogota. Now, on top of that, there is um, Ethereum's newer, younger cousin with more features and more um, technical sophistication because it's 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 an evolved it's it's the third generation of blockchain technology. They are having their yearly community um, conference called Cosmoverse in Medellin end of September. So we have the world's top um, talent in the crypto industry converging into Colombia for an entire month, and I feel this would be a really powerful opportunity to be bringing the extraterritorial and interterritorial places together um, to actually see what does financing regeneration, what does cultural uh, uh, adaptation of, of these new tools look like. So that is end of September, beginning of October. I booked my flight yesterday to come and visit Barichara for a week to do some on the ground scouting and just kind of see uh, what the vibe is like, because even though this is like my dream, my intention, I can see these things happening. It's only going to happen if there's more um, buy-in and more interest. So I think there already is a lot of interest because there's been a lot of refi events already happening this year. Um, they had a refi summit in Seattle. There was a refi spring in Portugal. And there are more and more of these refi events popping up. And you know, how regenerative are these meetups um, is another question where if it's just, you know, people in a conference room talking in circles, like how far has that gotten us? So the idea uh, that Bari Chara is a living laboratory where people can get hands-on experience to see, okay, well, if I, if I have assumptions about how we should be doing measuring, reporting, and verification, or if I have assumptions about uh, what does community currency look like, um, or I have assumptions for all of these other different projects. So I think you know, in terms of bringing outside investment into the regenerative projects locally, there is a lot of demand from the outside world into figuring out how do these new refi tools even work? Um, because even with region, um, they're launching their, their version 4.0 with new functionality, um, eco credit classes. So this is where all of this theory and all of this buildup is now coming into real life, into practice, and we're gonna see if it actually works and what works and what doesn't work. And at the same time, we have um, basically a massive ego death happening currently uh, among many different sectors, both crypto and traditional finance, where it's creating this wave of um, kind of ideological wasteland of people looking and searching for more meaning past the degen um, 
speculation, cultural habits, et cetera, et cetera. And this is where it's like syntropy is like leaning towards life versus senescence leaning towards death. So there is a marketing or storytelling narrative opportunity between hydrological watershed restoration and these DeFi liquidity pools. So that's kind of the, um, some primitives in the system that like, as we look longer term, how do we want to design our economies? How do we want to design our information governance systems? These are all up for grabs because we basically spent the last six years in the crypto industry building out the infrastructure and foundation to be running the decentralized autonomous organizations, running the token economics. And even though it is um, still very early, it's now it's more usable than it was, say, two, two years ago. So it's very exciting. Um, I'm really uh, looking forward to kind of diving in. I've been working here in Puerto Rico for the last two years. So there are, there, there's, there's a similar but different dynamic um, as well. And I also have uh, Italian citizenship. So Sicily is my ancestral homeland. And uh, that's a place that I, I feel at most home. So I could see myself um, doing territorial regeneration work there as well. And I'll be, after going to Barichar, I'll be in Sicily for a few weeks. And then hopefully we can um, maybe set up a working group or some type of, um, some type of platform for maybe channeling some of this interest because I feel like more and more people are going to be arriving at Bari Charo. In my mind, it's just the stream kind of, I don't know, like a Woodstock event where it's just like everybody just knows to converge and um, people are coming there with the right intention, I think, um, especially as we transition to more like regenerative tourism. It's like, what is your intention for coming here? So um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that's just kind of the, the little uh -huh. intro. And I'm sure there's a lot more to say about all of these things and um, you know as we start to think about how do we finance uh, territorial land trusts and turning those into land banks and setting up um, decentralized infrastructure on top of that is is kind of my long term uh, long term career objective. <laughs> just plan on making it two weeks. Just just change your ticket now. <laughs> yeah, I I got yeah. <laughs> I, I would like to um, use this time as just an introduction to help to solidify a lot of my my thinking as well as just to be a and and you know the more people that come the more it's going to attract so Joe was the first crazy guy dancing and then there was this but it was the second guy second crazy guy dancing that then everybody decided to come so it's going to be um, you know, more awareness. I think that's what's kind of happening now is as we move from the degen to region meme, there's just more awareness, more human awareness, more eyes, more people thinking, more people looking, um, and eventually crossing that knowing, doing gap and acting, but within the, uh, the, the appropriate cultural framework. So my, my background is, um, I would guess lean more anthro, like a mix between economics and anthropology. One of the most interesting classes I took in college was um, burial and death in ancient China. <laughs> um, the our thesis was actually our thesis was we made a video and the teacher was like an old school like really like you know this Mr. Lai. Anyways, we made kind of like an MTV documentary of like a guy dies and then he's haunted because you know he didn't honor his ancestors right. And the teacher was totally not happy about it. Anyways, <laughs> I ended up living in China for, for five years after college. And, and two of those years were spent in a traditional farming village, managing a boutique hotel that had been renovated. So there's a lot of lessons learned from that, from that adventure. And it's cool to see um, a similar model playing out in Bari Charik. So I feel very um, connected to, to that dynamic. And really, yeah, ex exactly two weeks, two months, two years, more and more people coming, um, the more we can spread this cultural pattern, like like the bees dancing. And we don't all have to go to Barichara because we can act locally. And it's um, it's so amazing to witness the productivity gains on cultural cohesion. And I think now <laughs> it's kind of like, as we move into the next election cycle in the US, and it's like, don't even want to think about it, but we're going to have to have even stronger memes 
than the degenerative memes that are going to be blasting. So I feel like right now is actually the time to be proactive and getting the story out. And even though, you know, Joe, you're hosting so many, so many calls, so much content, and it's just the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's so crazy. Uh, I mean, Netflix should be coming to Bari Chara for a show, but that's, it's not going to be like that. It's going to be everybody's like little stories and perspectives cumulatively adding into like this movement. So um, yeah, I'm just thankful everybody's like, you know, putting in the work and uh, we're really excited to get down there and, and hang out in person and see these dreams come to life. Yeah, no, thank you, Antonio. And I, I just want to say this, this opportunity for being the body chara sandwich between these two events in September and October is a bigger deal than most people realize. And it, it's almost like Gaia orchestrated it. I mean, it's sort of like, Antonio and I have been talking about this uh, for a few months because it's his idea. Uh, and just watching everything that's converging, like there's no one, there's a weaving, but there's not a weaver. Um, and so there's something really important happening. There's so many weavers weaving, but it's the logic of the weaving that is weaving us all. And the logic of the weaving is that centropy, that life creating, synergy building, symbiosis, cultivating this pattern of creating more from more rather than less from less. And, um, and there are very key ecological principles involved in that. Um, I just wanna basically ask at this moment, if there are any other uh, sharings or questions or comments sure. that people have, uh, Stephen, please come on in. So, do you want to pick the chair for a moment? Yeah, go for it. Okay. The chair is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Um, let me switch to the view so I can see everybody here for a moment. Thank you all. All those whose cameras are on. Hi. Um, yeah, this is day three. Oh my God. Um, other than the ride up here, which was four hours of winding mountain roads, um, it's the longest three, longest, best three days ever um, in terms of immersing myself here. Just, I can feel, just feel stuff peeling off, shedding off. 40 years of my life that I've been trying to figure out where to fit in and what to do with all of the information I've collected and it can all come and be expressed here. Um, yeah, and this is only day three. <laughs> I can't imagine what I'll be like. I leave on the 29th. I just can't imagine what things will be like at that point. So um, it's just an incredible community and incredible land. And it's exciting to hear people talk about wanting to spread it out. Like, you know, you're saying really cool stuff, Antonio. And if everyone came here to Bari Chara, it would never make it to the rest of the world. So it's so great to hear you know, people wanting to take it to other places. And this place feels like my new home. So. Um, well, thank you for sharing that. I wanted, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you had uh, something else on your, on your mind, Joe. I know we're at the top of the hour already over. So this, you know, th this exactly that, what you just said is so important is, is, is basically, um, and hi, my name is Jan. You've never met me. So um, I, I got into this similar to Antonio from, from more of a blockchain and regenerative finance perspective. So thanks for inviting me. But it, what, <clears throat> what you just said around the feeling, right, is directly the, the, uh, what Antonio was saying about the storytelling, right, to, to create the awareness uh, to, to a wider audience that is seems to be exploding from all sides people are jumping onto this train and and you are with this project um one of the pioneers that people will look up to um so i i just wanted to say hi and, and thanks again for 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 sharing that uh, after after three days wow um <laughs> that you see that so clearly um and 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 just say hi thank you for for getting me on this call i'm also hoping that we can meet in person in Bari Chara after the, um, the event in, in Bogota. I'd really love that. Um, I'd love to see everything for myself. And then I'm just going to close with sort of, uh, uh, Antonio said and, and summarized it all very well already, but the, the on the ground community, right, that is putting their hands in the dirt is that those are for me, those are the heroes. And that is where when technologists come in, um, 
it, it's both, right? The, uh, the, the farmers and the on the ground people are trying to learn the technology, but the technologists also really need to understand who are they building for? Because ultimately whatever platforms they're building, they need to work for people like you and, and give benefits, uh, right? To, to that group of people. And, and it's, um, that's what excites me to be here. So thank you very much. Lovely to have you here, John. Thank you, John. I'm glad you're here. Pamela, I want- You were muted, Joe, I didn't- Pamela, I want to just finish some something else before I let you go. So I see your hand though, and uh, I'll give the controls back to Joe in a moment. Um, Cause I, as far as like an update, I have my own connections into the cryptocurrency with a project called Holochain. Is it just me? I don't hear anything. It's just you. Well, I don't know, does everyone else hear us? No. Did we lose our audio? Yep, Kathy can hear us. Yeah, I can hear. Okay, thank you. Um, so I, I have a couple different connections that I'm bringing to the community and- Okay, no. You're good. Somewhere going to- so, so um, I have connections. I've been working on a video editing project for an organization called the Commons Engine and also the Metacurrency Project. And we've just finished a currency design course that will be released on Udemy. And I started a conversation uh, the other day, only within three days, so it was just some other day recently, about um, bringing in a cohort from the um, Earth Regenerators community for people to learn currency design from the world's foremost currency designer, Arthur Brock. And uh, I just all, immediately seeing all the ways people are trying to do things and see the value of learning the ways to look at currencies beyond money and beyond tokens, beyond the crypto that we know when we use the word currency. And then also uh, starting to grow uh, the Holochain project, which is designed from biomimicry, different basis than what most other projects like Ethereum and blockchain are coming from. And in the just in the past two days while I've been here, I've been helping nurture a conversation where there's going to be probably a huge Holochain contingency, they're all interested in regeneration, um, coming up with some sort of face for the world to start to see more about how that technology is designed. Someone, would someone chat John and yeah, let him know it's just him since he can't hear me if I say that. So that's just like, you know, three days here and I'm already weaving in the other pieces of both my life and the other communities that I'm a part of. So that's what I have to report in the update. Thank you, Peter. Mm. So, uh, Pamela, did you still want to share? Yeah, um, it was interesting to hear uh, what is happening in the pro-social world and that that's a really big part of the weave. And I'm just, uh, as we all know, there have been bumps in the road and uh, the pro-social muscle has really had an opportunity to be exercised and uh, been a really helpful um, uh, part of what we're all really doing all of this for. All of these other things are in a way helping human beings be worth keeping on the planet. Um, and it's not an easy thing to um, come out of our degenerated uh, culture and work well together. And you had mentioned earlier, Joe, something about uh, uh, having uh, an aspect of that happening in Barachara. And you, since you had mentioned it, I was just wondering if that was anything that you or someone else wanted to speak to um, or, or, uh, or what? Mm. Uh, that's a good question. I would say I can speak a little to it and I can invite anyone else to speak to it as well and to speak to it in a general sense, which is um, what, because I, I don't want to, uh, to, I don't want to frame the story is what I want to be careful of, which I could claim the framing of the story and that's what I want to be careful not to do. The story is not finished yet, so we don't know what kind of story it is until it's played out. But in a general sense, um, one of the things that's happening right now is there's so much complexity involved in what we're doing that we're way worse than the three blind men and the elephant, way worse. And so there's a really difficult challenge when 
the laws of physics still apply, which apply to information and attention in our brains. Um, like how much a single person can pay attention to, how much emotion they can process, or other things that eventually hit their limits. Um, and there are lots of these. And so one thing that I'm seeing is we are creating patterns of relationship that enable us to practice holding more complexity. But in doing that, some of our ways of relating become strained or broken. And that when that's happening, there can be confusion and hurt feelings and difficult to process things and difficult to restore things and trying to get back to the way things were, but they can't go back to the way they were. And so it's, it's like um, one of the pieces of this that I think is sitting in the space here in Bodhi Chara is that there was a dynamic centered around how various people were relating to me. And there was a need for more decentralization and, and sovereignty. And one thing that's happened is that there's now more decentralization and sovereignty. And I think there can be various interpretations and judgments and assessments of how well or how poorly that process is going. And so what I think is interesting in this is to hold the complexity of it and to give the time for emotional processing. I know Pamela and I have had a, a very beautiful, I'd say very, very intense and beautiful patterning of this, of what it means to sit into complex emotions, to hold them for a period of time, to come back to the strength of a relationship, to build from what is strong, to explore and clarify what's happened and what is happening, and then very intentionally and mindfully build forward from that. And there's a lot of emotional complexity involved in that. And so I think in a way what's happening is our emotional complexity is needed for us to have collective intelligence complexity which is needed for human management to align itself to a greater amount of ecological complexity that already exists. And that we haven't made it explicit that that's what we're doing, but that's a, that's a part of what we're doing. And um, you could just see that in the way that I presented today. I'm intentionally trying to show part of the, more of the field than anyone can see. But I'm only trying to show the part of the field I can see as Antonio was alluding to and John was alluding to, they're connected to other fields that I only get tiny glimpses into. And so this is true for all of us, is how do we hold fields of fields um, so that we can do this work? And I think one thing that's happening here in Bari Chara is we're feeling some of those bumps and bruises, some of that awkwardness and confusion, some of that moving forward, not moving forward, moving differently than we thought, breakdown of stories, growing of new stories. And, and that's real messy human drama. And what I think is important from, from my own experience is to just let it be real. Meaning don't try to, um, uh, don't try to fix it too quick, but also don't neglect it too long and figure out what kind of sensibility helps us figure out how to answer those two things. Because there's no simple, Way of, there's no recipe, maybe the way to say it. And so, so that's the way I would describe it to just allow for the space of the multiple perspectives um, because it's not through and it's midway. Um, I'd love to just open space for anyone else who would like to share and also to say just uh, for the sake of time, we're an hour and 15 minutes in, so just naming that or whatever that means. Um, so I don't know if anyone else would like to share, there's no pressure to. I, I would like to let everyone know that today is World Sea Turtle Day. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and uh, I think that's kind of like, um, yeah, I've been, my time in Puerto Rico, I've, I've been surfing a lot and paddle boarding and snorkeling and just trying to be in the water as much as I can because that's my healing environment and my creative inspiration. And, and I often will bump into turtles and sea turtles and I'll start swimming with them and kind of noticing their personality, their shell shape, and anyways, this, um, th what this turtle teacher has taught me is that, you know, we go through these highs and these lows, these transformations, these things just go at a steady pace and it's enjoy the ride. So bull market, bear market, I say it's, it's turtle, <laughs> it's turtle time. <laughs> so, oh, I love it. but yeah, it's, it's cool to hear, keep it real. And, you know, we've, we've, this isn't everybody here has been on this journey their entire life right this is this is a lifelong process of of growth and 
debt and do it all over again. So I think coming to grips with, um, you know, who we want to be in this process is really inspirational um, to give people hope for tomorrow by living today. And how do we want to spend our time? So I think we all want to be, if we could be regenerating all day, every day in, in, a, in an ideal, we wake up every day and it's from morning to night, we are living our fullest, most vibrant, most alive um, existences doing the things that make us come alive, which is giving life to other life. So that's, uh, that's what I want to share. And that's how I'll close Turtle Day. <laughs> thank, thank you, you Joe. Is there anyone else you'd like to share? The only other thing that I want to add is thank you very much for speaking to that, Joe, and I'd like to hear anybody else who wants to speak, but I, I just really appreciate having that degree of transparency about just exactly that it's not all roses, roses, and that people can expect there to be bumps and that there are processes and models for addressing those things and getting through it. And if it's if it all seems roses, roses, then I think it can be much more shocking when you come up against a bump. Um, so I, I appreciate having that in the space as part of the story as well. Yeah, I think it's really important. Is there anyone else who would like to share? Kathy, please. Thanks. Um, yeah, I, I won't say too much, but I will say that sometimes what shows up um, as a weakness, um, I mean, in other words, we all have our gifts, right? And when you have a model of shared leadership, that means that um, if one person doesn't have uh, the thing that they can offer that will help, then maybe somebody else in the group does. And um, so when there seems to be a, a glitch, uh, a gap or, or something like that, that we can either frame that as, oh no, there's a weakness in the leadership here. Alas, woe is me. Or we can say, oh, so, you know, Joe has uh, 75 talents. Maybe he doesn't have that 76th talent. Uh, talent. Um, so maybe somebody else in the group likes to facilitate and Joe doesn't like to facilitate. You know, Joe's, Joe's an amazing speaker. He's an amazing weaver of, um, of, of just unbelievable amounts of information and, um, and networks. However, maybe facilitation isn't something that he enjoys doing. So then that means it's time for somebody else to step up. And uh, I, I just saw it as an opportunity to step in with, with um, some facilitation. So I did. And I think that I felt really good about it. And I think most of the folks here also did. So I just want to thank you, Joe, for the opportunity that that opened up. And, um, you know, moving forward, we have a little bit different emphasis in our Monday meetings. Um, that is that two people are going to co-facilitate each time, or at least that's the goal. And uh, we're, we're setting our own agendas instead of just sort of passively saying, oh, of course, Joe will set the agenda, Joe will lead the meeting. Um, and it's, you know, it's too much. You have enough else to do. So there. <laughs> I like that I can actually physically give Kathy hugs. This makes me happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, thank you for that, Kathy. Is there anyone else you'd like to share? Then maybe it's a good time to wrap up and just say, um, I'll, I'll be uploading the video to YouTube and I'll share it under the event for the body chart updates. And probably I'll write a post about it in ER so that people can find it if you'd like to share this with anyone. I feel like what we're doing here is really important for other people to learn. I think it's really important for us to be as open and transparent as we can be without overwhelming with detail and information. And I personally take a pedagogical approach of slightly overwhelming um, as, as an intentional thing to sort of like hack minds. Um, but, uh, but I feel like what's really important is for us to 
feel into how we hold this very complex dialogue. Like which different parts of the dialogue need to happen in different places. Like what is already happening in the ER governance group that doesn't need to happen here in Barichara and better if it doesn't. But whatever is happening in Barichara, how can it help and inform that and who will be the conduits? And we're gonna have questions like this pop up all the time and it's always gonna be changing. As there's just so much happening now. Um, and it's not gonna slow down, it's going to complexify, become more complex. Luckily, that means part of the system will slow down, but also there'll be more modularity and more diversity. And so, um, so just naming that. Uh, I wanna thank you all for being here today. If you'd like to talk with anyone in Barichara about what's happening here, reach out to them directly, which includes me, but to anyone here, to just really name that there's now a lot of perspective building that is taking place. Like, you know, Paula was here with us uh, until last week and we're, we're sad you're gone and glad you're coming back. You're coming back, right? <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> just to nudge that further. But uh, just to say, speak with any of us about what is happening and help us weave this. How do, how do we weave these patterns from, from what is here to what is there? It's, it's just, that is also gonna get more complex as we go along. And so, um, just recognizing what we're doing has never been done before. And so, um, so there really is a pioneering hold the failures quality to this, which is you can't expect to do right what's never been done before. So we're gonna figure it out by failing and prototyping and learning. So we need to have really good ways of sharing what we're learning and just get better at it all the time. Um, so with that said, thank you all for being here. Thank you for participating so fully. And we look forward to playing and creating together in whatever forms make sense as we all move forward. So thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.